Thank you for standing by and welcome to the Q4 2020 Materialized Financial Results Conference Call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. After the speaker's presentation, there will be a question and answer session. To ask a question during the session, you will need to press star 1 on your telephone. Please be advised that today's conference is being recorded. If you require any further assistance, please press star 0. I would now like to hand the conference over to your speaker today, Ms. Harriet Fried of LHA. Thank you. Please go ahead, ma'am. Thank you for joining us today for Materializes quarterly conference call. With us on the call are Fried von Krun, Founder and Chief Executive Officer of Materialize, Peter Leif, Executive Chairman, and Johann Albrecht, Chief Financial Officer. Today's call and webcast are being accompanied by a slide presentation that reviews Materialize's financial and operational performance for the fourth quarter and full year 2020. To access the slides if you have not already done so, please go to the Investor Relations section of the company's website. The earnings release that was issued earlier today can also be found on that page. Before we get started, I'd like to remind you that management may make forward-looking statements regarding the company's plans, expectations, and growth prospects, among other things. These forward-looking statements are subject to known and unknown certainties and risks that could cause actual results to differ materially from the expectations expressed, including competitive dynamics and industry change. Any forward-looking statements, including those related to the company's future results and activities, represent management's estimates as of today and should not be relied upon as representing their estimates as of any subsequent day. Management disclaims any duty to update or revise any forward-looking statements to reflect future events or changes in expectations. A more detailed description of the risks and uncertainties and other factors that could impact the company's future business or financial results can be found in the company's annual report on Form 20F filed with the SEC. Finally, management will discuss certain non-IFRS measures on today's conference call. A reconciliation table is contained in the earnings release and at the end of the slide presentation. With that, I'd like to turn the call over to Peter Lays. Go ahead, please, Peter. Thank you, Harriet, and thank you, everyone, for joining us today. As, as always, you can find the agenda for our call on slide number three. As a first item on our agenda, I will summarize the highlights of our financial reserves for the fourth quarter of 2020. Then I will pass the floor to Fried, who will provide us his key takeaways with respect to our performance last year. After that, Johan will walk you through our fourth quarter numbers in more detail. And finally, I will come back to give you some qualitative insights in what we currently believe the near-term future will bring. When we've completed our prepared remarks, we will be happy to respond to any question that you may have. So, let's turn to slide four, which summarizes the highlights of our financial results. Just like the second and third quarters of 2020, the results of our fourth quarter were impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. While we expect the impact of the crisis on our performance to continue throughout the first quarter of 2021, we do see a number of encouraging signs of recovery. First, while our revenue was still roughly 10% lower than the fourth quarter of 2019, our revenues in the reported period do represent a 10% increase on a sequential basis compared to our revenue in the third quarter of last year. Second, we are further encouraged by the fact that in Q4, our deferred revenues from software license and maintenance fees grew by 3.4 million euro compared to the end of the third quarter of 2020. Third, in spite of the revenue decline, our adjusted EBITDA margin remained healthy at 16.3%, actually 10 basis points higher than the 15.3% margin that we reported in the same period of 2019. Importantly, this performance did not come at the expense of our R&D efforts. 
On a comparable basis, R&D expenses increased by 10.8% in the fourth quarter of 2020, compared to the last quarter of the previous year. And they represented 14.5% of total revenue, compared to roughly 12% of total revenue last year. Finally, we closed 2020 with cash and cash equivalents of 111.5 million euro on our balance sheet and with total gross debt of roughly 115 million euro, of which only about 17 million is due within the next one year. And with that, I would now like to ask Fried to give some further color to these numbers. Fried? Good morning or good afternoon, everyone. I would indeed like to focus a moment on the last numbers Peter mentioned because they show the impressive resilience materialized demonstrated during the crisis year 2020. Our gross debt decreased by 13 million from 128 million in 2019 to 115 million. Our cash position decreased by 17.5 million from 129 million to 111.5 million at the end of last year. I consider this an exceptionally strong performance, as it actually means that, except for 4.5 million euro, the hard work of our team members in 2020 financed, in addition to the normal capex, a year-on-year -year increase of R&D efforts by 7.1%. On top of that, the first phase of our new IT infrastructure program for a total amount of 3.3 million euro was rolled out. And then the acquisition of RS Scan and RS Print, for which we paid roughly 8 million euro in 2020, was financed. And finally, for the strategic partnership with Ditto, with Ditto we drew in 2020 2.8 million euro from our 9 million US dollar facility. All of this was financed in a roller coaster year where several of our production and sales activities came to a near complete standstill in the second quarter. The very strong recovery of our medical segment in the second half of 2020 requires many of our people to move abruptly from standstill to an overtime situation. The slower recovery of our software and manufacturing activities requires skillful management of a wide variety of temporary employment measures in the different countries where we operate. We did not implement any redundancy programs, earning top employer awards in both early 2020 and 2021. And we retained our key talents, the core knowledge asset of our company. We will need those talents to tackle the big changes and opportunities that we are expecting in the next decade of 3D printing that starts now. Let me demonstrate this with our segment strategies in more detail. Our medical segment has demonstrated its flexibility and innovation by the super fast development of several products in the early days of the pandemic, when supply chains were at the peak of the problems. Simultaneously, our team released several new software products that expanded our legacy Mimics innovation suite and hospital-based point-of-care 3D printing solutions. These proved to be a major tool for some hospitals deprived of normal supply. These new releases also position materialize well for growth in the cardiovascular market. We showed our passion for personalized medical products 
when hospitals could reopen their elective care activities with accelerated deliveries and did not let down the surgeons and our medical device company partners when their planning of interventions was extremely difficult. All in all, this resulted in a year-over-year -year growth for our medical segment despite the severe economic difficulties for hospitals and related companies in fields that could not be directly linked to the pandemic. As we all expect that the medical sector will quickly return to serving all kinds of medical needs as soon as COVID-19 is under control, we believe that the experience of 2020 will spur elective cases to be the first time right as much as possible and well planned, of course, for each person or patient. This is exactly where Materialized Medical excels. Now, moving to our manufacturing segment, it has been the one most severely hit during 2020 especially due to ex exposure to the aerospace and automotive sectors. The COVID-19 crisis in those sectors cannot be seen independent of the long-term climate crisis, which is driving an unprecedented change in both sectors. This is a threat and opportunity at the same time. The strategic actions that we started already before and that we even accelerated during 2020 are twofold. First, people at Materialize believe in empowering sustainability and we hate waste. That is why we believe we are well placed to serve the needs of the future in aerospace and automotive. We can provide services in which energy and materials consumption are minimized. And we can enable our customers to do the same. For instance, lightweight rapid fit fixtures that are reusable cater the needs of an electric car manufacturing. Rapid fit, so historically high order intake at the end of 2020. Second, the footwear and eyewear activities in our manufacturing segment have demonstrated much more resilience in 2020. And this is where we made the most important strategic investments in Q3 and Q4. As we explained in our investor call in November, both for eyewear and insoles, there are millions of consumers that need the right personalized solutions and additive manufacturing has the functionality and economics to deliver this. Materialized passion for personalization made us develop not only the products and processes for the 3D printing of those products, but also the entire software backbone that allows us to create and harvest value from the moment of data capturing at the point of sale with an optician or a podologist up to delivery of the final product at the house of the customer. We believe we can grow our own products in those sizable markets during the next decade substantially. Last but not least, 2020 has also been a year in which a transformation within our segment, software segment accelerated. One can see the software segment as the one through which the accumulated know-how of 30 years of materialized additive manufacturing knowledge is shared 
with the additive manufacturing users worldwide. It is obvious that the COVID-19 crisis has accelerated the digitization in general and cloud-based services in particular. Companies preferred in-house solutions such as those offered by the standard Magic Streamatic or Streamix suites and they still rely on them today. This is demonstrated by the growth of our recurring revenue on annual basis that our CFO will explain later in this call. There is, however, a growing interest in cloud-based solutions, often as a service rather than a product for scalability reasons. For instance, all our medical OEM partners are taking advantage of the cloud-based services Materialize provides. That is why previously we have started already a complete redesign of the legacy materialized software kernel into APIs that take full advantage of the best scalability and security options that cloud technology has to offer. During 2020, we came close to a full transformation of our software technology base in cloud-compatible APIs that are ideal building blocks for the future. Not only to run the old functionalities in the cloud, but also as a base for reliable workflow automation, which many additive manufacturing applications are waiting for. As a result of the transformation during the launch of the Materialized Thinking series in mid-November, we could announce several new products for this year, 2021. Magic Storefront is a full e-commerce and CRM solution in one platform. The new Process Tuner is an intuitive online platform that helps speed up the optimization of process parameters that is required for mass market mass manufacturing of 3D printed parts. Both are examples of a new generation of cloud-based services that are fundamentally based on a comprehensive magic cloud platform we are rolling out. Through these steps, we have ensured that existing and new materialized software customers have access to the most comprehensive body of additive manufacturing intelligence available through software algorithms and data. In the new normal that we expect soon after the vaccines have beaten COVID-19, we are strongly convinced those will be very successful. Johan, up to you. Thank you, Fried. I begin with a brief review of our consolidated revenue on slide five. As a reminder, when we refer to sales in our presentation, we mean revenues plus deferred revenues. Also, please note that unless otherwise stated, all comparisons in this call are against our results for the fourth quarter of 2019. In this year's fourth quarter, our income statements included two months of the RS print activities as a result of the 50% step-up acquisition of RS Print and RS Chem on November 9th of last year. Revenue decreased 10.7% to 45.3 million euro for the period. COVID-19 continued impacting our software and even more so our manufacturing segment. However, compared to the third quarter of 2020, we recorded 11% growth, boosted by manufacturing that grew 26%, plus 21% if we exclude the RS print impact. The 3.4 million euro increase of deferred revenues 
from software license and maintenance fees underscores the strong sales performance of our software and medical segment in this fourth quarter. For the quarter materialized software accounted for 23% of our total revenue, materialized medical for 38 and materialized manufacturing for 39%. Cross-segment revenue from software products increased to 34% of our total revenue. Moving to slide 6, you will see our consolidated adjusted EBITDA numbers for the fourth quarter. Consolidated adjusted EBITDA amounted to 7.4 million euro, a modest increase of almost 400,000 euro compared to Q4 last year. This decrease should be seen in the light of a quarterly revenue decline of 5.4 million euro. Besides the effect of reducing variable cost of sales, the many cost-saving initiatives we implemented had a substantial impact on keeping our EBITDA margin at 16.3%, one percentage point above last year. All this while we increased our R&D efforts this fourth quarter on a comparable basis by 10.8%. Slide 7 summarizes the results of our materialized software segment. Here revenue was 15.7% below last year's quarter. The current revenue grew 3.5% from last year, benefiting from a strong increase of renewed license sales. Non-recurrent revenue decreased 31%. On a sequential basis, however, compared to the third quarter of 2020, our materialized software revenue increased 7.8%, and the sales even increased 40%, for zero, including the effect of deferred revenue of 2.3 million. The significant sequential growth of our software sales of 40% was boosted by an increase of direct sales of 48% while OEM sales rose 9%. EBITDA amounted to 3.9 million euro compared to 5 million. The EBITDA margin remained strong at 37.9% compared to 41.5. In fact, while revenue decreased 1.9 million, cost containment measures in SGNA amounted to 0.9 million, while R&D efforts increased. For the full year, the EBITDA margin increased 1.1 percent point to 34 percent, and this in the light of a decreased revenue of 6 percent over the full year. Moving now to slide 8, you will see that total revenue in our materialized medical segment was 17.2 million euro, matching both the quarterly record revenues of Q4 2019 and also the solid performance of Q3 2020. We are particularly proud of the materialized medical full year result that, in the midst of the pandemic, still represented an increase of 1.5% compared to an already very strong 2019. Revenue from our medical device solutions remains strong. At December 1st, 2020, Materialize acquired the remaining 25% shares of Engine Plan from the founding family in exchange for Engine Plan's spinal implant business line, which was non-strategic for Materialize. Since that date, Engine Plan is a 100% materialized company with a very targeted focus on our CMF business. Because the pandemic in Brazil delays the rollout of our business plan in that region, including the introduction of 3D printed devices, we impaired 2.5 million euro of goodwill and intangibles related to the Engine Plan acquisition of 2019. Revenue from medical software sales accounted for 30% of the segment revenue. In the last quarter of 2020, our medical software sales matched the quarterly records of both fourth quarter of 2019 and of the third quarter of 2020. Moreover, medical software sales 
excluding the impact of deferred revenues, increased by an impressive 40% compared to Q3 2020. While revenue was flat, adjusted EBITDA increased 28% to 4.8 million from 3.5 million. We succeeded in reducing operating expenses by 2.4 million euro, while the segment increased its R&D pro, um, program efforts by 11% on a comparable basis in line with our strategy. This quarter we impaired the capitalized expenditures on our balance sheet of 2.1 million euro related to our tracking spin development program. A couple of setbacks were affected our expectations related to the timing of start of commercialization, creating a longer period of uncertainty and leading to this impairment. We currently still believe in the successful outcome of the program and of the associated business case, so we plan to continue this R&D program in full. As of Q4 2020, our R&D expenses related to the program are reported now in our income statement. Now let's turn to slide 9 for an overview of the Q4 performance of our materialized manufacturing segment. This quarter, manufacturing revenue included two months of activities from our newly acquired RS Print and RS Scan footwear business line. The revenue represented €762,000 in the fourth quarter. This revenue, yeah. Total revenue decreased by 16%, mainly due to our AC tech business. Our traditional 3D printing related manufacturing business lines recovered well and came close to the revenue of Q4 2019. Compared to Q3 2020, total manufacturing increased 26% or 21% if we exclude our sprint footwear. But including already a double-digit growth in AC tech as well. Despite the mitigating effects of lower variable expenditures and labor cost reduction efforts, gross profit of materialized manufacturing was still negatively affected because of the fixed cost of underused capacity. Savings measures resulted in a decrease of operating expenses of 13%, or almost €800,000. As a combined result, adjusted EBITDA decreased 0 0.7 million to 1.1 million euro, while the EBITDA margin was 6.1%, which is uh, all in all not that far from last year's 8.3%. Slide 10 provides the highlights of our income statement for the fourth quarter. Revenue decreased 5.4 million euro or 10.7% and gross profit decreased 2.4 million or 8.4%. Gross profit was negatively affected by the cost of capacity in our manufacturing business lines, but positively impacted by efficiency gains and the growing software and services portion in our revenue sales mix. As a result, gross profit margin increased to 57.8% compared to 56.4%. While revenue fell 11%, our sales and marketing spending decreased 23%. GNA expenditures increased 12%, an increase entirely due to the rollout of the ongoing internal digital transformation project that we discussed in our last earnings call. Excluding the impairment cost of our Trekkel Sprint program, research and development expenses increased 11% this quarter, in line with our stated strategy. This quarter's net op operating expenses were 0 0.3 million euro and included the 2.5 million impairment cost of goodwill and intangibles, and a positive revaluation of 0 0.8 million euro on our initial 50% interest in RS Print. Last year, net, op not net other operating income was 1.4 million. As a result of these elements, 
the group's operating result was negative 2 million mm -hmm. compared to a profit of 2.5 million in last year's period. Yeah. Net financial cost was 600,000 euro at the same level as last year. In context, income. expense amounted to an income of a half a million, mainly due to a new German tax law enabling tax carryback on 2019 taxes. Net loss for the fourth quarter was 2,118,000 euro compared to a net profit of 1.2 million for the 2019 period. Now please turn to slide 11 for a recap of balance sheet and cash flow highlights. In this fourth quarter, our balance sheet remains strong, as both Peter and Fried pointed out earlier. Cash amounted to 111.5 million euro compared to 128.9 at December 31st, 2019. But over the same period, our borrowings decreased by 13 million to 115 million. Only 17.2 million euro of our debt is short term at December 31st. Equity decreased almost 10 million to 133 million euro as a combined effect of the year to date net loss of 7 million, negative conversion differences of 6 million, and income from the exercise of stock options for 4 million euro. Of the negative 6 million conversion differences, 4.6 million euro reflects the effect of the weakened Brazilian real on engine plant's equity position. Total deferred revenue amounted to 34.9 million euro as compared to 32.7 as of end 2019. Of the 34.9 million, 30.2 were related to annual software sales and maintenance contracts versus 27.7 as of December 31st, 2019. Cash flow from operating activities for the fourth quarter of 2020, 2020 increased 9.5 million to 15.2 million euro from 5.7 for the 2019 period. Main contributors to the strong operating cash flow were the EBITDA performance, a further improvement of our working capital of 3.8 million and deferred revenue of 3.5 million. Full year operating cash flow amounted to 30 million euro compared to 28.4 last year. Our days of sales outstanding position even improved from the past quarters and our customers have not shown any material payment difficulties. During the quarter, we paid 8 million euro for the acquisition of RS Print, including the acquisition of the assets of RSCAN. Capital expenditures for the quarter amounted to 3.7 million euro and were not financed. This quarter's capex included a 0.3 million euro investment related to our ambitious internal digital transformation project and that besides the 900,000 euro expenditures reported under GNA in our income statement. Peter? Thank you, Johan. Before opening the floor to questions, we would like to try and give some qualitative insights about what 2021 may bring in the short term. As we explained in today's press release, our fourth quarter 2020 results and the customer feedback we have been receiving to date in 2021 are encouraging. The COVID-19 crisis continues to impact our business, however, and does this in a fairly diverse way across our various segments and the various regions where we do business. As a result, our outlook is currently not sufficiently mature for us to provide meaningful quantitative guidance for our consolidated full year 2021 performance. Today, 
we do have more visibility on what the first quarter of 2021 may bring. We currently expect that both our software and medical segments, which continue to recover steadily, have the potential of posting revenues that come close to the revenue levels that they posted in the pre-pandemic first quarter of 2020. We do not expect our manufacturing segment to recover to the same extent and at the same pace in the first quarter of this year. As a result, we estimate that our consolidated revenues in the first quarter of this year will be 5 to 10 percent lower than what they were in the same period of the previous year. The backlog of orders and the pipelines of our manufacturing business in general and of our AC tech and rapid fit activities in particular are becoming stronger by the day. Because of the nature of these businesses, that recovery will only be reflected in our Q2 numbers at the earliest. But based on that information, we believe that in the second, the third, and the fourth quarters of this year, as the pandemic crisis subsides, the entire group, including our manufacturing segment, will perform well and will grow sequentially quarter over quarter. In line with our strategy, just like last year, we will continue to invest in our R&D programs and internal infrastructure. And this will weigh on our overall results in 2021. This concludes our prepared remarks. So operator, we are now ready to open the call to questions. At this time, I would At like to remind, time, would everyone. Like remind everyone in order to ask a question, order to ask press, a question star press star, star and, and then the number one on your telephone keypad. On your telephone keypad. We'll pause for just a moment. We'll pause for just a moment. The Q&A The Q and A Your first question your first comes from question the line of, from the line of Jason Celine. Celine. From KeyBank, your from line is open. Bank, your line is open. Please ask your question. Hello, can you hear me okay? Hello, can you hear me okay? Hey, Jason, we can hear you fine. Okay, looks like uh, okay. a little like, bit of echo on my end. Um, so um, it looks like you had pretty so strong, you had renewal, pretty activity strong renewal, renewal activity in the first quarter. Uh, was it potentially uh, was from customers who had previously pushed or delayed from earlier in the year? Or is it a reflection, a reflection of more normal renewal activity? And this is for the software segment. And this segment. is for the software segment. Um, for the software segment, I think we can state that it's a combination of, of both. Um, some people had really such economic difficulties last year that uh, they postponed some renewals of, of maintenance, for instance, or annual licenses. Um, Despite the fact that we did very well on the recurring income side, we could have done better uh, if not some, some of our customers had experienced some uh, financial difficulties. At the same time, uh, you will have noticed that the OEM-related activity of our software was very low and that uh, we believe that the entire climate in the 3D printing sector will pick up so that we also have more possibilities uh, to uh, uh, sell in in relation in combination with new machine sales for instance and new projects that are going to be started this year okay great and then okay, one more for great. me and then one more for me uh, the, the, uh, commentary the, the, the commentary on the sequential growth from second quarter to fourth quarter, more specifically, more specifically for manufacturing. Your level of content here, uh, if I heard this correctly, being driven is being from, driven from third second to like sixty tech. Maybe can you talk uh, about maybe more? Maybe talk about um, more. Uh, 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 what, 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 what exactly is driving the confidence? Yeah, Jason, uh, I, I, 
we're getting feedback that there's quite a bit of echo on the line when people ask questions. So we get the suggestion that we briefly repeat the question so that everybody can follow. So I, I will try to, to recap your question. Your question relates to the sequential growth that we are currently expecting for the second, third, and fourth quarter of this year. And more in particular, with respect to manufacturing, you were asking where we draw uh, that confidence from. Huh? Um, Correct, yeah. Correct, yeah. Yes, you're right. I mean, we, we referred in our prepared remarks, we referred to the activities of AC Tech and RapidFit, two activities that really uh, are, to a very large extent, uh, active in the automotive sector. So if we look at um, the orders that we're getting in and at the backlog that we, those two activities are currently having, then we do see that the automotive sector in particular is picking up, is gaining confidence, uh, and is uh, finding its way to our salespeople again uh, with uh, good and strong orders that supports the confidence that we have expressed with respect to the sequential growth for the, the following quarters of this year. If I can add something, can add something to that, Peter. We also have the new lines that we have with the foot care that we also expect that will start ramping up, especially as from uh, Q2. And uh, simultaneously, also, we see uh, a good progress to come up in our eyewear business line, on top of the elements that Peter has already explained. Thank you, Johan. Next question from Your next question from, from the line of Arvind Aramani from Piper Sandler. From Your Piper Sandler, your line is open. Please ask your question. Please ask your question. Hi, Arvind. Sure. sure. So, so yeah, one of the items one of the talked items about was, talked about was uh, as as the year as, year as the year, year progresses, you know, how, how, much, know, are, how, how much of uh, um, uh, growth are you expecting? Uh, growth are you expecting from, from demand? Pent up demand. Uh, in other or, words, in other words, um, um, you know, that was not work done, that was not in, 2020, done 2020, in 2020. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, been uh, that's been uh, delayed. That's been delayed. You know, uh, you know, up demand of cash up demand of cash from your clients. Uh, should likely drive, should, should should likely nice drive demand like nice demand here. Uh, any color on that, any, that, would, any that would be helpful. Um, yeah, Arvid, um, I will also first repeat the, the question. You you are asking us how much increase of demand we, we estimate we will be seeing because of the delays in in orders last year. Um, yes. Actually, yes. we have a strong belief and good indications that this is going to happen this year. However, the quantitative amount we cannot express at this moment. That is why we give a, a qualitative uh, yeah, forecast, uh, because it's very hard to estimate at which rate uh, this is going to happen through the entire year. No? What we can currently state is that in the automotive sector, for instance, we have seen let's say, in, in, the, in the last months, a return to the normal situation of before the crisis. Um, and if that, that's, that's what we can currently state, but that's, that's where we are. Uh, uh, perfect. Uh, and, uh, perfect. And, and is there anything, and is there anything uh, in the uh, particular field, medical field, field the prepared remarks, the prepared remarks about, you uh, talked about, um, you know, kind of demands from the medical kind of demands field, from medical field any, the any further color you can, provide, color color you can provide of that would be, would, would be helpful. Would, would be helpful. Um, so, again, Arvind, I'll try to um, repeat your question. So your question was if we could also expand 
on the same to topic of bend up um, orders with respect to the, uh, the, the medical uh, sector. Yes. Um, yes. It, that will to some extent be the case, but I think there's, uh, we expect lots of actually genuine growth within our medical sector. So genuine growth not only coming from delayed uh, orders of last year, for a very simple mathematic reason that last year was actually a very good year, huh, where we showed, uh, albeit moderate, growth compared to 2019. Huh? But secondly, there's also the practical reality that uh, surgeons can only do so many um, uh, interventions um, on a day, huh? so they cannot just, um, so, so there is current business that is gradually being picked up, huh? but 2021 cannot basically um, lean heavily on many bend up uh, orders that would date from a year ago. So the growth that medical has shown and that we expect that medical will continue to show in 2021 is just genuine growth that has much more to do with the, the, the quality of the products and the disruption of the solutions that we bring than with uh, delayed orders from the past. Uh, all right, thank you. All right, thank you. Sure, thank you. Excuse me, presenters. Excuse me, presenters. I can see there's a I can see there's a static on the line of Mr. On the line of Mr. Peter Lee. Um, are you on a speaker? Um, are you on a speaker phone, sir? Yes, we are. Um, can you kindly um, can you use your handset, use your handset or switch your line, switch your line, line if you are speaking to prevent background? Yes, we will, we will mute the line when we are not speaking. Okay, sir. Let's move on for the, in the on the next question. Your next question comes from the line of Troy Jensen from Lake Street. Your line is open. Please ask your question. Hello, gentlemen. Uh, congrats on the improved results. Thank you, Troy. Thank you. Welcome back. Yeah, thank you. Glad to be back. Hey, so quick, I guess I was most interested in, uh, in Free's comments about the cloud offering here. Um, could you talk at all about like the timing of these launches? Has it started to contribute to revenue, or this is going to be a 2021 story? And then uh, I'll probably throw a few questions out here just because of the, uh, the mute you guys got to do. But is it going to be Mimix and Magix and Streamix? And I'm guessing this is going to be an OpEx expense now for customers versus a CapEx. So do you see this accelerating uh, revenue growth for you guys, given the uh, typically it's easier to get OpEx approval for that corporations? Uh, Troy, this is about a new products we announced at the end of uh, last year and that we are taking in, in beta test with customers during the first half of this year, but that only will be going on sales in the second half of the year. So the overall impact on results will this year still be limited. I hope this answers your question. Yep, yep, understood. Yep, That's fine. Yep, I do think probably. Fine. I do think probably. I'll let you guys mute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Try, try related related to your question about uh, capex. Uh, we uh, reported in uh, 2020 uh, capex of uh, uh, something more than 17 million over the full year. What will it uh, bring next year? We will continue to invest, that's for sure, we already mentioned. But there are two elements. In the first place, we have R&D investment that entered in our P&L, and second, we have our capital expenditures. We estimate that it will not be that far from what we have uh, invested in 2020 in the same range. But uh, the, the focus may differ a little. Eh? In uh, 2020, for example, we still invested in, uh, in manufacturing, also in our building. But now we, are, we, we count also on investing in our focus and our strategic new business lines where uh, Peter has, uh, where Fried has uh, uh, talked about. Uh, we also count on investing much more money in our digital transformation program, and that will uh, be, be partly reflected in capital expenditure, but also in our P&L. Uh, we have uh, um, to follow the IFRS standards, and not all of the 
in IT in the, uh, investments that we make are uh, to be recognized as, as capital expenditure, but some also have to be expense in P&O. Again, it will be uh, more or less in the same range. Yeah, I was actually referring to your customers when they buy software. They buy software. Typically, it's a capex purchase. A capex if it goes to a service, I think it's more of an opex purchase, and, uh, and I believe they can get uh, better or quicker approval. I'm going to move to the next question here. Um, software revenues were up 80% sequentially, but sales were up 40%, and I get that that's deferred revenues. Can you talk about what's driving that? Is that going to be additive applications, or is that the medical stuff? Yeah, the 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 forty percent applies really to our uh, technical software, so the the additive manufacturing uh, software. Uh, um, and again, I think there we we definitely had some catch up operations of people that postponed some purchases during uh, Q2 and Q3. All right, guys, one more question. I'm going to see the floor. Um, so some of the system companies are talking about an upcoming inflection in end part production, and I've always viewed that as good for your software business. So does this tie into this 40% growth in deferred revs? Uh, do you agree with the comment, uh, Fried, that we're starting to see an uptick in end part, uh, in end part applications? Um, yes, Troy, I, we are and we have always been very positive about the future of 3D printing. Um, however, you will, I, we can only talk, as we have been talking to before, about what we call the slow revolution. So the, the inflection point that is often mentioned is never a sharp inflection. It's a steady, that a steady uh, growth that sometimes accelerates a bit, and I do think we we can believe some acceleration will happen, of course, uh, when the economy uh, recovers. But don't don't believe it's going to double at once because the 3D printing is embedded in such complex manufacturing and and yeah. Uh, ecologic, ec ecological systems that um, this is always moving much slower than many people think. Yep, completely understood. Yes, thank you, and uh, good luck in 21 here. Thank you, Troy. There are no further questions at this time. You may continue. Thank you, operator, and thank you all once again for joining us uh, on this call. We look forward to continuing our dialogue with you through virtual investor conferences or one-on-one -on -one meetings and calls. Obviously, we very much more look forward to meeting you again in person, hopefully somewhere in the second half of this year. But in the meantime, please feel free to re reach out to us if you have any questions. Thank you again and goodbye for now. Bye. Goodbye. This concludes today's conference call. Thank you for participating. You Bye. may now disconnect.